and picking up the torch as the campaign chairman of the American Foundation for AIDS Research. Use red, nobody's dead. We'll have red products, we'll have red phones. Members of the public often notice the celebrities who have suddenly and inexplicably become experts on public health. We have turned these kinds of stars into authorities on things way beyond their own training and their own knowledge. Science, with its harsh efforts at total objectivity, can actually hold within its ways of operating the seeds of its own failure. At least they should open up the field to people with other theories because their own has proven to be such a resounding failure. In science, we cannot have any prejudice. The fact that AIDS started in the gay community has nothing to do with the sexual preferences that these group of people have. The old paradigm in science is first you find the cause and then you treat the cause. Well, with AIDS, we have violated both. Not a single retrovirus has been ever demonstrated to be responsible for any single human disease and certainly not killing anybody. Disbelief in science is the essence of progress. We shouldn't um, despise criticism of science. We should welcome it. It wasn't a plot. It wasn't, a, it wasn't even greed or anything like that. But the failure has been the whole kind of bandwagon that got rolling stopped science from following its normal checks and balances and putting right this, this fundamental mistake. To think that the collapse of the human immune system, which is a very sophisticated system that's built up over millions of years, just started happening in 1980? I'm sorry, this is science fiction. A positive HIV antibody test means that a person will eventually develop AIDS, considered by most to be a death sentence. There are two tests in common use. One's called the ELISA, the other's called the Western blot. The standard screening test is an ELISA. Occasionally you get a false positive. Uh, under those circumstances, a Western blot can absolutely confirm. HIV tests have got a well-documented, huge list of over 60 things in medical literature, established medical literature, which shows that these tests are completely non-specific. Everybody uses it experimentally, and most people use it around the world. Not Maybe Britain doesn't use it. Maybe there are two countries that found a better way. God bless them. There are different criteria for reading these tests. In Africa, all you need is two of these bands to be positive. In Australia, you need four. In the United States, we have five different sets of criteria for reading Western blots. If you were tested in New York today, then flew to Australia, and you had three bands in New York, you would not be positive in Australia but you would be positive in New York City. Now, I mean, a virus cannot behave in this manner. AZT causes diarrhea. AZT causes muscle wasting. AZT causes instant old age. How do you know which is the disease and which is the effect of the drug? There were many patients who developed blood toxicities. There were many patients who experienced other symptoms of adverse reactions. Think of all the people who died from uh, what we think was AIDS. Were those people, in fact, killed by AZT? Using drugs that are targeted against HIV has been a tragedy, worse than useless. The antiviral drugs are chemotherapies. When you give chemotherapy to somebody with cancer, you give them a round of it for maybe 14 days or a few days. Hopefully, you're not going to kill the patient you're going to kill the cancer. He's just going to survive. But you don't keep giving it to him until he dies, because he certainly will. The more people are treated against AIDS, the more people will eventually develop AIDS from it. And then the perfect excuse is delivered with the medication. You can say, Jesus, if I hadn't medicated you, you would have been sick even sooner and would have died sooner. The HIV AIDS establishment is still repeating. There is no cure for AIDS, there is no cure for AIDS, there is not a single cure for AIDS. Africa is a country where they say everyone has so much sex all the time that they're spreading this virus terribly and that the lorry drivers are spreading it up and down the big highways. Poverty is a main factor of AIDS in Africa, which is not the case, of course, in the States or in Europe. Malaria, bongo fishing, the lack of elementary facilities, 
the abuse of women, the neglect of children. Weight loss of greater than 10% of your body weight, chronic diarrhea, a persistent fever and cough. By that definition, uh, a Western researcher like myself uh, has had AIDS. The test picked up immune system activation from this great variety of causes. In Africa, what's called AIDS is simply relabeling other diseases. Malaria, 11 times before you're seven years old. Diarrhea, seven times before you're one year old. The pathogenic assault, the toxic assault, makes your immune system very, very at risk and depressed. But in the case of impoverished Africans, it is assumed that these symptoms have come about because of their sexuality, because of their sexual behavior. I think that we've been basically chasing the wrong paradigm for the last 20 years, and I'm afraid to say that it doesn't look like that's going to change anytime soon. They'll backtrack a little bit, but they'll never give HIV. We should continue as combatively as we can to speak out and shake up the dogma. The next generation of younger doctors is going to now be able to see all the information before.